The Blight Caller is the new class in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. This class focuses on poison damage, but also kind of like any kind of damage, really. It is so versatile and powerful. Today, we're going to go through a fire damage build and just talk generally about how this class works and everything you need to know. Let's go. If you enjoy this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments if you're picking up this DLC and trying out this new class in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. So how this class works is the Blight Caller has great synergy with all types of elemental damage. Poison is definitely the specialty here as there are more passive skills that benefit poison damage. The versatility of all of their skills, really, there's at least one skill that buffs like different types of status damages. So you realistically can have this as a secondary stat for any kind of status damage build that you may make. Their class feat also fits within this, Whispers of the Rot. Apply a status effect increases elemental damage for a duration and this effect can stack so realistically any kind of status damage build fire lightning poison frost whatever it may be is perfect to go with this blight caller as your secondary or even your primary class if you're looking to really play around with that the two active skills also benefit from this the plague storm is the first one the fate maker summons a plague storm at a target location dealing poison status damage over time in that area this is applied in a static location and the effect only applies when you deal non-ability damage to enemies in that area so essentially like gun damage it will then trigger this lightning effect from the storm to then damage the enemies in that area this isn't as strong as the bulk totem because it is only in a static location and most of the time you'll kill enemies very quickly that are actually inside the area just because of the amount of damage that you're going to be doing in that specific spot and just waiting for enemies to like come to the storm and then kill them just feels really redundant when you could just move around the battlefield and actually kill them because of how spread out enemies are in most of the encounters in Wonderlands. The Bog Totem, however, which is the other active skill, summons a Bog Totem companion to a target location, which periodically creates elemental spirits that seek out nearby enemies dealing ability damage and exploding on impact. Elemental damage type is based on the Fate Maker's currently equipped weapon when activated. That is the big thing here, right? Is that the elemental damage of the totem is the type that the weapon you have equipped when you cast it is. So say you have a status damage build that's focused on frost damage. If you're holding a frost damage and then you use these totems, they'll be frost or fire like we are with this build so then they're fire damage so this again is perfect for any status damage build or any elemental type damage builds because the damage type of the totems will be benefited by whatever the type of weapon you're using so we're using a fire build here so my totems are fire damage and all the fire damage increases that i have are being benefited by the totems and i can have two totems at once so i'm just dealing so much fire damage to like everything it fits really well with this build and just how it all kind of synergizes together and just the flexibility of this skill is just much more than the plague storm totem because of the elemental spirits are like super heat seeking and they have such a high amount of range that i mean they'll just hit anything from like across the map it's really valuable to have now as mentioned this build focuses on fire damage so for my skills everything is really going to be in that category and really benefiting on that but we'll talk generally about the skills for this class as a whole so for my skills here i'm obviously using the bog totem i'm probably not going to read the names of these skills because i am terrible at pronouncing things but <laughs> i'm using this one to increase the status effect chance and duration gun critical hit chance have a chance to create the poison bog spirit that'll seek out enemies and deal poison ability damage now because our crit chances are so high you're going to get this effect really often and it does a decent amount of damage when the attack does come out i'm also using wraith main which will increase my ward restored when i kill things as well as combining it with flawless so because we're combining that my damage dealt will be 30 percent extra when my ward is full so often when my ward is full because it will be full because this is being triggered then it will also increase my overall damage which it combines with dedication for the claw bringer so your action school cooldown is reduced when you do have have maximum one the rest of my skills i'm picking up a couple in the poison damage just with the extra skills not like too important and my fire rate when i switch weapons because i will often switch between a poison and a fire damage weapon because they're the two main categories i use now a lot of these skills in this middle section here are based on the specific elemental type of damage so say if you were making different damage type builds with the blight color then you would focus on them but we're not picking those up the main one i want to call out here is bog down so if you are making a lightning or frost build in really anything you absolutely would be using the blight caller as your secondary or primary class and picking up bog down so soaked enemies take more damage from lightning and frost damage less from fire but that wouldn't matter because you've got a lightning or a frost damage build this is a really powerful skill but it doesn't fit this fire damage build that we're focusing on but if you're making any kind of claw bringer lightning damage or some berserker frost damage really powerful skill to pick up same as if you're with the berserker you pick up frostbite to increase that damage overall but we're focusing on fire so burnt offering is the one we're picking up which increases 
bonuses, your fire status damage, your gun damage, your spell cooldown rate, all valuable things to have. Plus that gun damage especially is really good to have. I'm also picking up toxicity. So when the faint maker applies a poison status effect, his critical hit damage, companion damage, action skill rate are all increased for a duration. And because we will apply the poison status effect relatively regularly, but not like all the time, if you wanted to focus on it, you absolutely can, but you increase your damage overall from having that. The spirit swarm is really powerful. Now this status effect will create like a swarm. It kind of looks like bees, I guess, like a swarm of bees, and it will be whatever type of elemental damage you do, and it will deal a decent amount of damage to anything that you do hit it with. My secondary class is the Clawbringer, and this is because picking up all of the fire damage bonuses here. My chest piece does give me benefits to fire damage, so I'm able to get that skill to eight, so I get that extra 32% fire damage, as well as picking up Dragon Aura and increase my elemental damage for more fire damage, as well as dedication, the skill that turns my Wyvern into a bit more of a fire focus here, and a couple of other Wyvern benefits here. So really this build is a mix between a fire damage build as well as using the Vivan pet for extra damage. For your myth rank here, you really want to focus on the same kind of things that we're talking about with this build as a whole. So fire damage, you want to pick up in the Archmage line. Deadeye, you're really looking at gun damage as your main magazine size, pretty important as well. And for Druid, I'd be looking at picking up some of the companion damage for all of the pets you have, as well as loot luck because who doesn't like loot luck? For your gear, you obviously need a fire gun for this build. I'm using a fire assault rifle as it's the best fire weapon that I've had drop. RNG hasn't been perfect for me. I have really haven't really found any good fire weapons, but it's the best I've got. You could use any kind of fire weapon that really benefits the build that you like to use, whether it's a shotgun or an SMG. Make sure you also have alternative types of weapons, especially a poison weapon, because you will get poison damage increases from using the Blight Caller class anyway. So having a poison weapon just as your secondary is really valuable to have, plus a lightning just in case you do hit shields, because shields are really hard when you're focusing on like a fire build like this. And for attributes, Strength and Dex are my primary two here for critical hit damage and critical hit chance. And then Attunement as a secondary to lower the skill cooldown so I can get more bog totems out as quickly as possible. Some general tips for playing this class. Movement is key as always with anything in Wonderland. So make sure you're moving, avoiding standing in things. I am terrible at standing in things on the ground. I do it all the time. Try to avoid melee as much as possible because you will just take damage and you won't do a whole lot of melee damage with this kind of build. You can make a Clawbringer that focuses on melee with something like a Blight Caller, but we aren't really focusing on melee at all. Your totems are heat seeking and will find enemies to attack, but staying with them will maximize their output. So you don't want to travel too far from them because it will be harder for them to attack enemies. It also, enemies will always move towards you. So if you're close to the totems, you'll get the maximum amount of effort from them and be able to kill as many enemies as possible. You can also mix up the type of damage that they do. Say if you've got like a fire and a frost weapon or a poison weapon equipped and you're fighting an enemy that's resistant to your main type of damage like fire, you can then switch to something else like the poison weapon, summon the totems and then switch which are other types. Or even if you want to have multiple different elemental types out, you could switch to the poison, cast it once, you get a poison totem, and then switch back to fire, cast it again, you get a fire totem, right? There's a lot of flexibility in how you can cast them and actually use the different effects that they can do. Let me know in the comments what you think of this build and this new class. I apologize if my voice is a bit raspy. I've literally just streamed for three hours and recorded this audio, so my throat's a little bit sore. But thank you for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza, and I hope you have a great day.